Hello serverless people, in this video I want to explain you how Lambda versioning analysis work. Versioning analysis are two different concepts that work together and enable you with different use cases that I'm going to explain during the video. Alright, I am on the AWS console, in particular on the Lambda function console. I've created the function. The code is the sample one from AWS, so it's just like returning hello from Lambda. When first created, a Lambda function doesn't have any published versions. You can think of it as having an unpublished version. The unpublished version is assigned a special version value, which is known as latest, which points to all unpublished engines you're currently working on. So in this case, we are, we are pointing to the latest version. And the latest version is always like editable, so you can change and work on this on this uh, version. So let's say we want to change it here and say const to return and say just hello, for example. And I change it here, stringify the, the variable, need to deploy it, run the test, and we should see the hello. Okay, we got the hello, we got the first execution. Now let's see how we can uh, publish this version. All right, as I said, let's see we are happy with this result and we want to publish this version to use it in our production service. So we will go to versions in here and click publish new version. As you can see, you can only add a description. So let's say first version of Lambda. You cannot, you cannot set the uh, version number. This is something assigned by AWS. The first version, of course, is going to be with number one. So I click publish. And we see the name of the function change because here now we have the version number assigned to the function. Note that now we have published the Lambda function. The code is read only, so I cannot change it. And also here AWS is telling me this code and handler editing is only available on the unpublished function page, which means that once the Lambda function version has been published, it is immutable. You cannot apply any code changes to it. You can only apply new changes from a version that is created from the latest one. So if you want, if you want to change the uh, code of the Lambda function, we need to switch again on the latest version. So let's explain now what actually is and what includes a function version. So a function version includes the following information: the function code and all associated dependencies, the Lambda runtime that invokes the function, so which type of runtime you're using. All the function settings, including the variable variables, and also a unique Amazon resource name, ARN, to identify the specific version of the function. So when you publish a version, Lambda locks the code and most of the setting to maintain a consistent experience for users of that version. As we said, it is immutable. So now let's switch again on the latest version. So click here, edit code. As you can see, the version number disappeared from here because we are now pointing on the latest version. If we go in here, we will see for version one. So we go back in here and now we can uh, change the code. We can add stuff on the code. So let's say that now we want to edit the code, publish a new version with uh, a result with, which is more dynamic. We want to return the time step of now with the hello string as well. So I'm going to edit this function and put like uh, hello and then the new date, new date, and also get time. So we got the time step of now and we deploy the function. So let me test it. Okay, and we have the time step of now. If I test it again, it's gonna change. Yes, of course it changed, perfect. Now we want this code to be linked to a version. What we're gonna do again, we go on the version tab and we publish this version. So remember that now we have the code that we are publishing is the one on the latest, which is the one we just modified. So I publish new version and say get time version because this is the more dynamic one. So get time version publish. And we are back on the, as you can see here is the, the version number here. As we said, if we do the test, we will see, we will see again the result with the number. Yes, we have it. Let's go back to the latest function and back on the version stuff. So we had deployed two versions. One with the first version of Lambda, we would, it was just like a static string. And the second one with a dynamic string with the get time version. So now we have two versions of the Lambda function, how we can use it. This is where we can introduce the aliases. So let's say you have a production service that is using the Lambda function and you have outcoded, you know, every time you publish a new version, you have to outcode the new version on your uh, production code. This is not ideal. You would like to use a string like an ARN, which can change in the future, but it's going to still point to a specific version of the Lambda function, the one that you want to run in production. You cannot do this with versions because every time you publish a change, it's going to be a new version, but you can achieve that with aliases. So, so you can think an alias is like a pointer to a specific function version. 
you can create an alias that points to a specific Lambda function version and then use the alias inside your, your code instead of like hard coded the version code of the Lambda function. So let's say that in your production code, you want to use the new version of the Lambda function. So the latest, let's say production code here, like prod, prod alias. And I want to use this, I want the alias to point to the version number two, the one with the get time. And I click save. Now you see I have an alias on my function. If I run the test, I will get the result with the get time because my prod alias is pointing to the version two of the Lambda function. Now what happens if I want to change which type, which version I want to use in my prod? In the previous case, I will have to change the uh, version number on my code. So on my production code and deploy a new, a new code. In this way, using aliases, I can just say, okay, my prod alias now has to point to version number one. I just go in here, prod, edit, change, point to version one, save. And I don't have to do anything on my production code because in here, I just go on prod. I'm going to show you if I run the test, it's going to return hello. There you go. We have hello. So this is like a huge advantage because you don't have to change anything in your production code. You just change the alias and the version that you want the alias to point to and you have your code running to the to the Lambda version that you want. Now, aliases also enables you another use case. It can, can also be called blue-green deployment. So let's say you have to deploy a quick fix for the Lambda function to prod because you fixed a bug that is in production. And after developing and going through QA, you want to deploy this fix, but you need a way to gradually apply this change to your user. So you want to say, okay, let's say that 50% of the functions use the new code, 50% of the others use the old code. You can accomplish this by using the weighted aliases. I'm going to use the same alias I'm going to show you. And actually you can see the effect here. Here is saying weight 100%, but basically an alias can be also weighted. So let's say you want the prod alias to point to two different version. So let's say, so let's say let's run version number two, 50% of the case and version number one, 50% of the case and click save. In this way, as I said, it's like a blue-green deployment. So this is a way you can you can use to test a new feature or test a bug fix. And now if we go on the prod aliases, run a test, we should see that we got two different results, like in a 50% weight. So the first one was hello. Let's see if we are lucky. Yes, hello. So you see, we were able to run two different versions using the alias. And this is a great, again, when you have to deploy bug fixes or new features when you want to test a new feature let's say on just 10 percent of the users all right guys i hope this video was useful to understand the difference between uh, versioning aliases and how you can use them remember to subscribe to the channel to see a new video every week and thanks again for watching